welcome to the Money Love Story series. I'm Kate Northrup, author of Money, a Love Story. And as part of the launch of this book, what I've been doing is interviewing some people who I know and love and respect about their money love stories because money is such a taboo topic in our culture. And my feeling is the more we talk about it in public in a conscious, loving way, the more people will be inspired to know that it's actually possible for them to have a conscious, loving relationship with their money. And so I've invited, I can't even tell you how thrilled I am, to have one of my mentors and dear friends, Barbara Stanny, who is the author of Overcoming Under Earning, as well as Prince Charming Isn't Coming, as well as The Secrets of Six-Figure Women, as well as a soon-to-be-out book, which I'll let her talk about if she wants to. Um, and Barbara is the reason that I'm even doing this work. So, Barbara, thank you so much for coming on and telling your money love story. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad to support you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And, you know, um, just for those of you listening in, you'll hear, you'll when you read my book, Money, A Love Story, you'll hear a lot of references to um, Barbara's work because it's influenced me so much, and I can't recommend her books. Um, highly enough, so check out those for sure, and go to barbarastanny.com because she has some amazing things going on over there. And so, first of all, Barbara, I would like to ask you, what did you learn and witness and experience when it came to money when you were growing up? So I grew up wealthy. My father was the R of H&R Block, and the only advice he ever gave me about money was don't worry. Because under that was the unspoken assumption, there'll always be a man to take care of you. So I love that advice. I never worried about money. All I wanted to do was spend it. And to me, I'm, I, money was just always there. It's like a, a fish to water money to me. was It was always there. And I remember one time I heard a couple, a friend of my parents, complain about money. And I was shocked because I didn't know adults had money problems. So for me, growing up, money was a non-issue. And it, it's so interesting because his advice, don't worry, is what got me into trouble because I didn't worry about it. And I remember we were on a radio show together, my father and I. And the host asked my father, why did you tell your, your daughter not to worry about money? And he said, in the sweetest sweetest way because I really didn't want my girls to worry he just didn't get it then he didn't get how important it was that we understand money now you referenced in that that early story that it got you into a little bit of trouble later on because you didn't worry about it or think about it and no so I didn't you, worry about it and, 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 yeah Oh, I was just going to say, can you tell the next chapter of, of what happened as a result of that? Sure. So I, okay. <laughs> so it was always my father taking care of it, and then I married a man who was a lawyer, and then he became, he went to, came and worked for Block, H&R Block, and then he became a financial advisor, a stockbroker. And so I, he managed all the money, and I thought this was great. But very early in our marriage, I found out he was a compulsive gambler, and he lost a ton of our money. And the way I found out is one night I came home from work, and in my, bed, in my living room were my mother, my father, and my husband sitting very seriously, very quietly. You could slice the tension with a knife. And my father says, sit down, Barbara. And I sit down, and he goes, do you know your husband came to me to borrow money because you found a house? We just had our second daughter, and I, we were looking for a new house. And he said to me, do you know you have no money in the bank, that your husband has lost it all? And I was so shocked, and I was so humiliated and this was so out of anything I ever expected to happen, that I said, yes, I know. <laughs> I just was so embarrassed. And so my father got screamed and yelled, and they left, and 
I looked at my husband, and he looked at me, and it was like we were just sitting there, speechless. And that's when he explained he had lost all this money. Wow. And he promised he'd never do it again. Well, if you've ever known an addict, mm-hmm. you know how often they promise they'll never do it again. And through the course of our 15-year marriage, every year, once or twice a year, I found out he'd, he'd lost all this money. And he always swore he'd, he'd, he'd never do it again, and I always believed him because that's how intimidated I was, how, how absolutely terrified I was by anything financial. And it wasn't until one day I went to the ATM, and I wanted to take out something like $60. And the screen said, no money. Well, whatever it said, no money. Right, there was no right. money there. And I kept putting my, my card in. I kept putting my card in and out, putting my card in. And it was like never supposed to happen. Right. So it was like at that moment, that was the moment that it was like someone threw ice water on me. That was the moment uh-huh. I knew I had a problem. And yeah. there was only one thing to do, get rid of the problem. Uh huh. So I got a divorce. Yeah. But there, you know, problems are never out there. They're always in here, I say, pointing to my head. Right. So I decided money's not my thing. I just didn't want to deal with money. Uh-huh. Well, I have this theory that if you don't deal with your money, your money will deal with you. Mm. And in the next year, I got tax bills for over a million dollars for back taxes my ex didn't pay, for illegal deals he got us in. And of course, my signature was on everything because I signed whatever right. he told me to sign. Yeah. And my husband had left the country. My ex had left the country. I did not have a million dollars, not even close. So I did the only obvious thing. I called my dad. I said, Daddy, uh-huh. if I have to pay this tax bill, will you lend me the money? And my father, bless his heart, said no, he would not. Now, I can tell you, after years of therapy, that's the best thing he could have done. But at that moment, I was furious, but even more, I was terrified. I had three daughters. I was not going to raise them on the street. I didn't know what I was going to do, but I knew I couldn't stay stupid about money anymore. Yeah. And that was the moment that everything turned. Wow. Just, I, just For those of you listening in, I just want to I just want to say how powerful it is to tell the truth about your money story. And, Barbara, that's one of the things that you've taught me through by example. And I know that it takes some time and, you know, some therapy and all of those things to be able to do that. But the ability to, to call out the truth and say this is what happened because so much of this is so shameful and, and it's brushed under the rug and, and you know, it's like the secrets. There are like so many secrets around money. That's what I love about your book so much, Kate. I, I really love your book. It's, it's, I find it very unique in that it really is about telling the truth about money. It's really about intimacy yeah. with your money yeah. in a way that I've never heard, seen or read in another book. Hmm, thank you for that. Thank you so, for that. And, and, you know, it is hard. And I know the first time when my first book came out, Prince Charming Isn't Coming, the first time it came, when I made my very first speech about – my story, mm-hmm. I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed that I didn't want to see anybody afterwards. Mm-hmm. It's because it is very shameful. It is very. Now, I, I'm with you. I, I, I hope that my story can inspire others. And I think we, we women need more role models. Yes, more honest role models, which is why I'm doing this Money Love Story series. I know. Because it turns out I have not talked to anybody yet who has not had themselves in a money pickle at one point or another in their life. Now, I want to know what's the next part of the story. Cause, cause so you're with this million-dollar tax bill. Your dad says, honey, you're on your own, and it was the best thing he could have ever have said to you. But what did you do to get – what did you do? For me, I don't often tell this part of the story. Oh, okay. Uh what, what I did is I went to classes, I, yeah. I tried to learn, and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't happening for me. It's like my eyes would glaze over, my brain would fog up, and I just feel terminally stupid. 
but I had three daughters. Now, my, they got my tax bill down significantly, but I still didn't know what I was going to do. And it became a spiritual experience for me. I figured this happened to me for a reason. And it was for my growth. Yeah. That's after a lot of therapy. Sure. This was for my growth. <laughs> I never expected that I'd become an expert on finances, ever, ever, Isn't that ever. Amazing? But I knew this was about me because I finally realized when, when things started turning is when I started taking responsibility. And I stopped blaming it on my ex and started seeing how I gave him the keys to the kingdom, how I enabled him, how I gave my power away so completely. So for me, it was taking my power back, and it was a very spiritual experience. And I did a, a lot of praying, and I did a lot of meditating, and I kind of wove it together, what I call the outer work of wealth, the inner work of wealth, and the higher work of wealth. Mm-hmm. And I remember one day... I, the children were all gone. The house was quiet, which never happened. (laughs) And I thought, okay, I'm going to read my financial statement, which I never did because I couldn't understand them. And I'm going to figure out how to pay this money back. And I did this big meditation. I think it was four or five hours. I did this little ritual, and I took a bath, and I lit scented candles, and, and I closed my eyes, and then I had my statement, and I opened my eyes, and I understood it. Now, now, meanwhile, this wasn't so outlandish because I had been taking courses, and I'd been studying, and yeah. I'd been reading. So that was all important. But I really believe, for me, combining the spiritual element of putting it in God's hands and asking for God's help got me over the hump. And I saw what I had to do, that if I sold every, all my bonds, mm-hmm. if it, Everything else was gone. I sold my bonds, and I still had some real estate left, which was shooting out a little bit of money for me so I could live on, Mm -hmm. that I'd be okay. Yeah. And once I took care of that, and I found a financial advisor to help me, um, things just started going. That is so cool. That's powerful. And the other thing that helped is while I was going through this, I was, this is, this I think is a total God thing. I was hired, I was uh, uh, writing for the San Francisco Business Times. I was a business journalist. And I was hired as a freelancer to interview women who were smart with money. (laughs) So you combine what I'd been doing with these interviews, women telling me how they went from being stupid to smart about money because no one pops out of the womb (laughs) knowing how to manage their money. And you put all that together, and it just came together. That is so cool. That's amazing. I love your story. And I figured so that amazing. God gave me my parents, and God gave me my ex-husband, and I thanked them both for screwing yes. things up so badly because it gave yes. me my wonderful career. Exactly. It's so gorgeous. And that, my friends, is a money love story <laughs> because That's Barbara right. – has been able to do that work of owning her power and seeing the gifts and thanking the teachers that came along the way in the form of her ex-husband and her parents. And it's just, it's such a beautiful example because I'm, you know, that was quite a financial pickle. And yes, you it was quite it a financial pickle. And you created pickle. this amazing um, career and you've inspired people like me and teach these courses called Sacred Success, which I know pulls in that aspect of bringing in the spiritual and, It's just so I can't wait to come to one of those at some point. And I just want to honor you and thank you for being a way shower for me. And, um, you know, just thank you. Thank you, Stanny. I love you so much. I'm just, like, getting chills and a little teary. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. you. And for those listening, I want you to know that um, if you want more of this kind of conversation, if you go over to moneyalovestory.com, you'll be able to find out how you can access a course that um, Barbara is coming on as a guest expert for that I'm teaching. It's called A Course in Having Enough, and you get the course for free when you buy Money, A Love Story. 
And uh, I'll also have, so I'll have Barbara Stani, I'll also have Marianne Williamson and Amanda Steinberg who founded dailyworth.com. So this triumvirate of power women is going to be amazing. And if you want to know more about Barbara Stani and her books and her work, please go to barbarastani.com. So thank you. I so appreciate you sharing your story and where you've come from and how you've inspired so many, including me. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, and congratulations on your wonderful book. Thank you. Thank you so much. Goodbye.